Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. For today we have the Auto Overclock and Undervolt RX7800 XT, one of the most recently requested videos. And I'm talking in this tone, in this light tone, because, well, it's kind of late here and people are sleeping and I don't actually want to wake them up. That's not a thing that I usually like to do, so let's keep it quiet, or at least more quiet than usual. And before the actual guide, let's start with the common questions. But before... Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So the first common question is, can I do this on my ASUS RX7800 XT, on my MSI uh, ASRock, on my Sapphire RX7800 XT, on my AMD RX7800 XT? Yes, the model does not matter. As long as your card is an RX7800 XT, these settings apply. The second common question is, will this void my warranty? No, it won't void your warranty. Although that some brands like AMD and some others, um, they say that be careful because if you overclock, you'll void your warranty. In some scenarios, firstly, it depends on the country. And secondly, they can't prove that you overclocked. <laughs> And with the software locks that we have today, it is almost impossible to break your GPU uh, by overclocking because once again, we have software locks and the GPU won't go above that. Uh, if you have some issues, you can still send the card to, to the warranty or to the store. There won't be any issues in 99.9% .9 of cases. Just letting you know. And the third and final common question is, Will this break my GPU or will this degrade my GPU? And the, and the obvious answer is no. no. And no, because like I told you before, the, the GPUs nowadays have software locks. Unless you're modding the vBIOS or the, graphic, the, the BIOS of your graphics card, nothing will happen. Because as soon as, the, as you try some values that may be harmful to the GPU, the computer will crash, the computer will reboot, but the card won't be damaged at all. The most it can help is that your GPU breaks because you have a time bomb instead of a power supply. But if you have at least a decent power supply that can handle the, the extra power draw, maybe the extra peak power draw, because it's not always about the average or the, the current power draw. Sometimes as soon as you overclock, the, the peak power draw can be higher. And that's one of the reasons why some power supplies cannot handle. But as soon as you don't have a time bomb once again, and you have a decent power supply, you'll have no issues whatsoever. So no, this process won't break your GPU and this process won't degrade your GPU as well. Now for the actual overclocking guide, we're gonna use the AMD Adrenaline settings. You can use other softwares, like for example, MS Afterburner, but since we have the AMD software and we actually have the overclocking profiles, we have overclocking profiles, overclocking tools inside the, the Adrenaline software, why not use it? So what you have to do is go to your desktop, right click on, uh, on the button of your mouse, and you have the AMD software Adrenaline Edition. Just open it, and you'll first go with the home menu, as you can see I'm recording now. Go to the performance tab that you have here on the top, click on it, then you have the metrics, tuning and settings subtabs, and you go to the tuning subtab. Now on the GPU we have the tuning control and the first thing that you want to do actually is go and, and select manual tuning. So we kind of have tuning presets and automatic overclocks, but the automatic overclocks aren't near as good as what you we can actually do with a, with a manual overclocking because as you can see, you can select the undervolt GPU option, overclock GPU option or over, overclock VRAM option. And by manual tuning, we can do all of these three at the same time, which is very, very good. It's the best option actually. So once again, manual tuning, go there, custom, and all you have to do is enable all the sliders. So let's start with the GPU tuning, advanced control, then VRAM tuning, then advanced control, then fan tuning, advanced control is not needed here, at least for me, and then power tuning enable. Also as for the power tuning, you're seeing that the card is drawing 66 watts 
idle, but it isn't actually idle. We're recording, and since we're recording, we're using the GPU. I'm recording using the, the graphics card, and that's why you see the total word power draw. The usual power draw that I have with only one monitor is around, let's say, from 8 to 12 watts. So the first thing that I do when I'm overclocking and undervolting at the same time, or even just overclocking, is go to the power tuning, which is one of the most important settings, and push the power settings, the power limits, to the max. And once again, this does not mean that the card will automatically consume more power. It means that the card will consume more power if the card needs more power to deliver more FPS. Some lower end models might have the power limit at only 0%, so you can't raise it, which is bad for overclock overclocking and undervolting. Some other models have 5%, others 10, others 15, others 25. It depends on the card. Maybe some really high end models might have 50%, like in some older GPUs, but not as common as, as before but still raise the power limit to the maximum in order to ensure that the, the, the card can consume the power it needs to perform better and deliver more FPS. After that, well, as for the fan tuning, I usually leave the zero RPM option enabled. So the fans will only start spinning, let's say at over 40, 50 degrees, it depends on the GPU actually. So here the fans are spinning at over, uh, at 45 degrees. So I believe that uh, the minimum temperature is 40 degrees. It will start spinning after 40 degrees. In some models, it's 50 degrees. In some others are is 55. In this case, uh, it is 45 degrees and the fan is working because once again we're recording and we have 60 watts of power draw but usually uh, I leave the, the maximum fan tuning at around 55% I leave it at 79% here or at 80% because this is an AMD reference model but the higher tier model you have the lower you can go on these values because once again uh, you'll have a way way better cooling solution so you won't need the fans to be spinning so fast as for the um, the gpu tuning well the gpu tuning goes a bit different from the 7700 xt the 7700 xt had kind of a software lock to 2600 megahertz while this does not happen to the 7800 xt it kind of still has a software lock in most scenarios but not near as bad as the 7700 xt so it works fine so the minimum frequency we do not need to raise the minimum frequency in this scenario like we did with the 7700 xt so for the, the 7800 XT, the minimum frequency stays at the 500 usual, and the maximum frequency raises from 2600, 2670 or 2600 megahertz to 3000. It means that the GPU will run at 3000 megahertz on titles where it can actually achieve 3000 megahertz inside the power limit of the GPU. In this case, it's 290 watts, I believe. So. If the game usually consumes more power because it depends on uh, on how the game is actually structured, for example, the most recent Assassin's Creed games like Valhalla and Mirage, they tend to consume a lot less power than other games. So in those games, since the game consumes less power, the GPU clocks actually raise to compensate the fact that uh, the GPU isn't being properly utilized. So they compensate with higher frequency in order to achieve higher FPS. That's how it works, basically. So in some games, it might achieve only 2600 megahertz. In some games, it might achieve 2700. In others, 2800. It depends on the power roof or the power limit that we have. Also, by the way, it depends on the resolution. So lower resolution, since the GPU is not as utilized as before, in lower resolutions, the maximum frequency will be higher and in lower, in higher resolutions, the maximum frequency will be lower. But still raising this, doing this alone with a power draw to the, with a power limit to the maximum will give you better performance already. Now, as for the voltage, this one is a tricky one because with the RDNA 3 cards, the, the Radeon 7000 series, um, they don't work like the previous cards. They work by power states. Meaning, for example, that if you're running, if your game is running at, let's say, 2600 megahertz, you'll have a base, a base voltage for those 2600 megahertz. If you're running at 2500 megahertz, you'll have a base voltage for those 2500 megahertz. If you're running at 2800 megahertz, you're gonna have a base voltage for those 2800 megahertz. So for example, if you go here and select 1100 instead of 1150, so decreasing 50 millivolts, it doesn't mean 
that the GPU will run constantly at 1100 millivolts. So like I told you before, the voltage slider is more like an offset. The lower the voltage slider or the lower you go with a voltage slider, the lower the, the voltage will be because you'll be applying a negative offset to the base voltage for each frequency and that's basically how it works. So the voltage slider, having a lower voltage slider is good because it will decrease the voltage but it will not decrease the voltage uh, equally in all states and it will it won't be this voltage that you are applying here in all states okay for example now since we're only recording we are decreasing to 1080 millivolts and the voltage is 742 millivolts because the gpu clock is low as for the values that i found the values are uh 1080 1080 is the minimum that i can go stable for every single game i can go for example as low as 1020 for example in some games or in some games even lower than that but in others it won't be completely stable and where i found to be the most stable option for all games so no crashes whatsoever is 1080 millivolts 1080 millivolts is perfectly stable for all games applications and so on as soon as i go below that i'll start having crashes what i advise you here is starting for example with 1100 millivolts because 1100 millivolts is a safe is a safe place to start uh, as almost all GPUs will be able to decrease the voltage to the state at least to to use the offset to the state start with 1100 millivolts and start testing in your games if you play your game for let's say 20 minutes or the games you play for 20 minutes um, and it is stable well then try to decrease a bit more to 1090 try again 20 minutes half an hour if it is stable try to decrease once again to 1080 and so on. In terms of games to test, I do advise you to test, for example, Assassin's Creed Mirage or Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, or test, for example, Hogwarts Legacy. From my experience, these are very good games to test. If your overclocking settings work on these games, like Assassin's Creed Mirage and so on, they will work on almost every single game. As for the VRAM, well, we have the memory timings, we have the default and fast timings. Fast timings are usually better because the lower the timings, the lower it takes, the, the less time it takes to make those same, the, those same not calls, how should we call the same cycles. So less time to make the cycles equals more performance usual and so on. In terms of frequency, what I found with the 7700 XT that you can see in this video passing right now in the screen is that it has a software lock. It wouldn't overclock 2 MHz above the, um, the base frequency if I was running the monitor at anything above 75 Hz, which is which is not understandable at all, but that's how it works. If I run the monitor at 60 Hz, it would run uh, at 2500, no issues, because the base frequency of that card is 2250, milli uh, 2250 megahertz, sorry. While the base frequency here is, well, around 24, 25 megahertz, as we can see here. I can go with my card up to 26, 100, usually from 12 to 14 millivolts is the offset that you have to apply in order to have this round number. Basically, this is it. Remember, all cards are different. Your card might be able to go up to 2700 like the RX 7900 series, or it might not even be able to achieve the 26, um, the 2600 megahertz. I do advise you to start, for example, with 2500 megahertz. So 2514 for the, off for the offset, apply changes. BAM 2500, 2501. If it is stable, try for example 15 or 10 millivolts more. So 25, 24. If it is stable, 25, 34, and so on. Or you can try already, uh, let's say 25, 64 to make the 25, 50 millivolts. Let's see. Yes, 2550 millivolts. And then once again, keep raising till you find the, um, the maximum stable value for you. In my case, 2614 it is. This is my scenario. Also, the VRAM tuning won't change as you are overclocking. The VRAM tuning won't change most likely because the VRAM tuning is running at maximum settings because we're recording. And since we are, we are recording, actually, um, we have the VRAM settings to the maximum and that's why the total board power is also higher than it should. Once again, you can tweak the settings but they won't raise like you see here unless you're having the high idle power issue. So 
it will be fine most times, it won't raise. But that's basically it. So as for the GPU core, power tuning, VRAM tuning, and so on. And I don't really think that there's much more to say. Also, you can try the, the memory timings. You can go, for example, uh, to if you don't want to go to the 2600, you can go, let's say, only 2500. If you can achieve, for example, 2550 megahertz, you can go, for example, to the 2500. You can kind of play safe with the 2500 megahertz, but at the same time, try the fast timings instead of the default ones. In some cases, it, the fast timings might actually deliver better performance than raising the frequency. In my case, once again, default timings, 26, 14 megahertz it is. And in this scenario, we can actually get only a bit more power draw, let's say 20, 30 watts, but in some scenarios we can get a huge performance difference in games like, let's say, Hogwarts Legacy and so on. The performance difference from overclocking is actually pretty big. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you have any kinds of can any kind of doubts, just go to the comment section and leave the doubts in the comment section. And as usual, I will try to answer as fast as I can. Also, the link to the um, to to these settings that you're seeing here, to the profile settings, and to the the power saving settings as well are in the description so you can go to the description and download these same settings that you that you see here all you have to do after downloading the settings is go here to import file select the location of, of the file for example in my case i tend to 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 save them on the c amd folder i have all here and then all you have to do is select one and press open and the settings will automatically apply but once again, remember these settings might not be might not be 100% stable for you, and they they might crash your computer. But don't worry, it won't break your computer at all. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next video, guys. And don't forget any kind of doubts, comment section, as it also helps the algorithm. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video. Cheers.